Hi engineering janta I am Vaibhav Shukla and today we'll be going ahead and practicing a previous year question for TCS coding because a lot of times TCS repeats the questions as well as the themes that come into the exam and on campus is already going on so it's high time it's expected that they might roll out off campus as well so it's better to be geared up accordingly and hence forth today we'll be practicing a question related to tcs coding fine and it will be a previous year question only so before i begin you simply go ahead and follow me on this particular instagram page which is atirat shukla ji speaks and here i can directly contact you you can directly coordinate with me you can ask queries to me fine so that would help you out let's move ahead without wasting any time and let's go to the question so the question is given an array of integers move all zeros to the end without changing the relative order of the non zero elements the whole point is that here what you are trying to do is for example if this is a particular input if this is a particular input you have to keep the order of non zero elements same and you have to push all the zeros at one end fine for example what output you are getting is actually kind of this for example let's take another example you are having 2 0 5 9 0 right if this is the array that you have given as an input as an output what you should get is 2 5 9 and then the rest of the places should be filled by 0 okay first of all the size of the array should not be altered fine if the array is containing five elements it should not contain six elements number one number two is the order of these non zero elements should not change so first was 2 which was non zero then another non zero was 5 then another non zero was 9 fine so how do you actually attempt this this is a quite famous question of previous year which has repeated often hence both i'm solving this way if i go further i have written a complete code here i have written a complete code just because this will help you in actually checking out few things fine and we have a lot of variables there but before i explain anything to you fine right? what i am trying to tell you is you keep on thinking in this way for example this is your array fine right? and this array had to or let's take this example only no 450 pala let's take this example only. so you are having 4 then you are having 5 then you are having 0 then you are having 1 then you are having 9 then again a 0 then a 5 and then a 0 okay so this kind of array is actually what is available to you fine what we do here is we declare a function fine what i'll do i'll explain you the basic logic first and then we'll go with the code what i'll do is i'll segregate all these elements out which are non zero find all these elements i'll segregate them out i'll keep it in another array where i'll keep on encountering every non zero element for example 4 is a non zero element i'll take 4 i'll store it then i'll move to 5 i'll check at this index whether it is zero or non zero so it is non zero i'll take it i'll put it here then i'll go to another index it is zero no issues i'll further move ahead again a non zero element found i will add it then i'll move forward again a non zero element find found i'll again move it again i'll move further i found a zero correct when i found a zero i'll not consider it i'll simply move forward i moved forward find what did i get a non zero element i'll add it i'll move forward i found a zero array finished right now if you see carefully how many elements did i have in this array 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 correct i had eight elements here i have already filled five places i had told you the new array that you are trying to make the output should not be different in size so you can maximum store eight elements here in this five elements are already filled with non zero now the rest three places i'll fill with zero and now if you carefully see all the zeros are at one end fine the logic is very simple the logic is very simple but while coding you have to think about the structures that can help you with this you have to think about the conditional structures that can help you out in this so i'll show you that fine so all you need to do is you have to declare 
one function you can name it anything you name it potato i don't care fine honestly you can name it anything so define move zeros to end fine and in this you're having array basically you're passing this array you're passing this here fine you declare a variable non zero index which is you have initialized it to zero fine this is basically the index for all the non zero elements so non zero index then for num in array if num not equal to 0 now what is this num this num would be this element fine which we are checking what you have to initially do is if num is not equal to 0 what you have to do is array non zero index equals to num right so this num is to be actually assigned to this particular array non zero index here non zero index is 1 so basically, is zero basically right now the non-zero index what we are talking about we are saying this now non-zero index here the array of non-zero index is nothing but array of zero because right now non-zero index is zero correct if the number is not equal to zero if that is the case then you have to assign this number to this particular non-zero index at array fine so in this new array if you're making any new array in this say so this was array in this at zeroth index or at the index which is being pointed out by non-zero index variable you have to basically put the number that you have encountered which is non-zero fine once you do that basically if you found four you stored four here basically in this particular list not this you need not see this array Fine, I'm removing it. The logic will work in a similar manner. All you need to do is you encountered it for you encountered four. You basically stored four here, and then you incremented the non-zero index. So earlier non-zero index was pointing here. Now non-zero index would point here. Fine. So non-zero index. Here it is pointing. This variable is pointing here. Fine, non-zero index. Now what you do is you check for i in the range non-zero index to the length of r fine when you've done with this loop so this will basically traverse in whole array this would traverse in complete array and it would check every number once it is done once it is done for num in array means every single array element would be represented by num it would keep on going on it would loop on throughout the array it would check so basically what i showed you is this process this for block is actually executing the same process. Once you found 4, then it would again shift to this particular statement. If num is not equal to 0, now num is this 5. Fine. It is not equal to 0, you would store it here, you would increment this non zero index pointer. Fine. You would increment this. Now it would start pointing out at this particular index, which is 2. So it started from 0, then 1, then 2, then it would point at 3, then it would point at 4. Fine. So it would keep on incrementing like this and all the non-zero elements would be stored here. Whenever it would encounter zero, whenever it would encounter zero, for example, post moving to five, it encounters a zero. What would happen? This condition would fail if number not equal to zero. This would fail. So simply this if structure would not execute. Again, it would start. It would move further and it would start. So it moved further. It would start with one. One is again a non-zero element. You store it. You actually increment the non-zero index. Okay then you store 9, then you store 5. In this way, you keep on storing it. So what exactly your array becomes is, after this complete iteration of the first loop, fine, after the complete iteration of first loop, how it will become, let's see. Fine. So after the iteration of first loop, it would look like this. Okay, like this. And now, when you have done this, this loop has finished its execution. Non zero is pointing out here. Non zero index, this variable is pointing out here. Okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It is done. Now, for i in range non zero index, so basically from fifth index to the length of array, so the last index would be calculated by length of array so length of array is 8 so this lower limit is 5 upper limit is 8 in this case so this 8 would not be counted it would be going ahead till the 7th index 
anybody who has studied python from me would know this if you haven't studied go ahead there is a complete yt playlist i have taught this python complete and all those people who need solutions in c++ or java try it out in the comment section i'll validate it whether it is correct or not fine now when i move in this second loop fine when i move in this second loop what happens is i told you from fifth index to eighth which is basically the length of array so fifth to fifth sixth and seventh it would go ahead and it will not execute of course for the eighth index because that's the length of array that's the upper limit that's how loops function in python so you are assigning all the elements the zero value so basically what i'm saying is iterate and here zero again move forward assign zero move forward assign zero fine and that's how the whole bunch of zeros would be stuffed and then you return this array so this is array you return this out you return this back fine you return this to this function now when you actually give array to this particular function it would print out the result that would be there right it would print out the result that is being obtained by this particular function is it clear itna hi hai c++ mein bhi aise hi hoga java mein bhi aise it is not a very big deal you go ahead you check it out to all of you this is a homework attempt this code if you are a c++ enthusiast in c++ if you are a java enthusiast attempt this in java i'll personally check those codes i'll validate those codes don't worry fine I'll help you out with that. I'll help you in the comment section. You go ahead, comment. Why am I saying this? Because here, if you comment, you might stand a chance to win PrepInstaPrime.com. Now, to all those people, what is this PrepInstaPrime? Fine. Look, I have told you a lot of companies have come. We have heard about Cognizant. I have informed you about Cognizant. Off campus of PCs might be released within a month or two. So all you need to do is you simply hop on to Prep Insta Prime so that your preparation can be expedited. Work come here, but no, I'm not kidding. Fine. So here, 200 plus courses are available for you to study. Fine. Even if you want, based from basic coding to data structures to competitive coding, data structures in your favorite language, go ahead, learn it out. Fine. Any skill that you want to pick up with certification, you can pick it up and learn. If you want to prepare for a company specific uh, profile, fine, or a company specific test. you can go ahead for example if i show you the tcs and qp course you are having everything from qualitative ability to skills to competitive coding to core subjects interview preparation everything at one place and you can get the access to all this by just clicking get prime right i know these prices might seem heavy to you so to all those people i have a special surprise for you that i had on the screen there as well all you need to do is you simply go ahead with web hub max fine you simply type out here webhub max fine and when you apply it this 32000 subscription would cost you around 65000 6500 99 basically uh, 6600 kind of fine it would cost you this much 6599 so you can go ahead and buy it out so that at least you expedite your preparation and that the code that i've written here as well you can go ahead see that out to use it out this would help you a lot for obtaining the maximum possible discount fine so wherever max is the particular coupon you can use and follow all the social media handles to obtain every important i would say information every important hiring update and keep in touch with all these social media handles of prefinsta so that you never miss out on any important information that is relevant for you fine right? on that note I'll just say one thing as I always say keep doing good for others without any expectation good will come back to you have a wonderful day ahead bye bye